I didn't get my job at Etsy until five months after graduating. It's not very generalized, the data science interview. You could be tested on a range of things, machine learning models to basic SQL, but I was also getting my Google Data Analytics uh, certification. In today's episode, we have somebody who I personally admire a lot. Uh, she's a data scientist at Etsy and she's joining us from New York. She's actually a fashion model and Miss New York Earth 2021. On top of being a woman of color and advocate for women in STEM, I am so excited to talk to Marisa today. Marisa, welcome. How is your day going? Hello. Um, it's Friday, so honestly, it has been pretty chill. I had no meetings today, so a lot of focus time, heads down work. I've been following your LinkedIn. From what I know, like you recently started at Etsy, so could you tell us a little bit about like what you do at Etsy? as much as you're comfortable with? Yes, for sure. So I started at Etsy six months ago and I am on their product analytics and strategic finance team supporting their seller ad experience. So I basically help small businesses uh, effortlessly grow their business on Etsy because when you think of Etsy, it's a lot of vintage homemade goods. So all these artists and creatives, uh, they don't really have a background in marketing or um, in growing businesses. So that is where our team comes in. So it's really fulfilling working there because not only are the people uh, so great to work with, but I'm learning so much and I am I really love like the core values at Etsy. That's amazing. So um, you said that you started recently, was it was it like last year, 2021? Yes. Awesome. So you basically went through the job search and the interview process recently. Like, how was that experience for you? It, it was a tough one, to be honest. 2021 was my best year, but also like the most stressful year because I graduated in June. And unlike a lot of other graduates, I didn't have a job lined up for me. So I started applying and I didn't, um, I didn't get my job at Etsy until five months after graduating. So I started online application and I asked people for referrals within my network. So that's people who, who have mentored me, who are friends of my mentors, uh, people I've met through internships or who have gone to UC Santa Cruz that are in the New York City area. After doing a little bit of online applications, then I finally heard back from the recruiter at Etsy and from there, I felt like it was the smoothest interview process. It took one month and honestly, I feel like you've gone over this in your in your content, but it's not very generalized, the data science interview. It, you could be tested on a range of things such as like machine learning models to basic SQL. Luckily for me, my, my role is very SQL heavy. So it was my strong suit and yeah, I got my offer one month after um, my online application and I started in August of last year. I think you touched on a very important point where the interview process is not standardized and it's, it can be very painful. And I'm sure you experienced that where you went into different interviews with different companies and you probably realize, okay, why is this interview so different from the next one? And then yeah. you always go with the, at some point you're like, okay, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to be like, okay, what's the surprise today? And I'm going to see like <laughs> what happens, what kind of questions they ask. Um, right. And that's, yeah, that's why it's so important to look at the job description because it can vary from the country you're in, the industry that you're applying in, um, to like seniority. So yeah, it really varies. And sometimes that makes it harder to know what to study for, for data science interviews. Um, but luckily I had some background in performance marketing at my other internship. So it really helped in this role, knowing the KPIs and like main metrics that had to do with performance marketing. In those five months, I also want to add that um, not only was I applying for jobs, but I was also getting my Google Data Analytics uh, certification, which Sundas is a part of. Like you'll see her in there, like in the later <laughs> half of the course. But that was so cool to see her. Yeah. So thank you for being an instrumental part of my interview process. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, actually, you know what, that's, I have two questions for you. Looks like you were going to school already. At what point you realized like you need to take the certificate as well? Like what was that decision when you took that course? How did it go for you? Did you think that you already knew pretty much all the stuff or did it help you in any way in your job search or your interview process? First of all, I, I took this course because I saw it on your social media. So thank you for <laughs> posting. And also I did not graduate with a 
bachelor's of science in data science. It's mm -hmm. an information technology. So it's very broad and generalized. Uh, that's why I took this course in data analytics. To be honest, I did know a lot of SQL already and R um, and a little bit of Python. So this course was helpful for like the structure of thinking. I did not take a class that had that covered this information. So it was really helpful in my structured thinking whenever I face an issue or question at work. You know, that's a very good point because when I was reviewing the, the certificate as an unbiased party, <laughs> one of the things that I, th that stood out to me was obviously like the, how the courses are structured is structured in a way that it shows you how a data project pipeline looks like. Like you mm -hmm. start with the problem, you ask questions and then you like go, go, go. And then like the final is like you build a story around it and figure out what insights you need. So I like that you said that because it, it, I think it did a great job kind of like giving you a framework on how to think about a data problem and how to kind of like solve it and how to address it. So thanks for sharing that. Did it also help you in your job search? Like, do you think like having it on your resume on your LinkedIn attracted people like recruiters and stuff? Yeah, for sure. It shows the hiring manager and also the recruiter that you want to continue learning and like learning is and like an endless cycle for you. Like there's always something to learn. Like I would love to get like my AWS certification once I'm like more settled into my job. But um, yeah, I, having those certifications, especially if you're not a data science graduate uh, would really help. Thanks for sharing that. So now going back to my second part of my question, which was your interview prep. So you, as you said, like you don't have a data science degree, you have an information systems degree, but you knew mm -hmm. SQL, R and Python. Like, first of all, how did you learn SQL, R and Python? And second of all, like, how did you prepare for the interview? What was your process? So at my internship at an early stage startup called Queenly, I worked very closely with the CTO and she taught me everything about like the data analysis life cycle, um, how to approach a problem, um, but also like the different like Python libraries you need to know. Uh, I have an article on Medium that I published with them, um, a part of their engineering blog, because I was building a feature for their app using machine learning libraries um, and also and also like a little bit of SQL. So having that foundation at that startup, that yeah, was really essential to the interview process. I did everything from writing that engineering blog to building out dashboards for, for their internal team. Did you also do like any projects outside of your internship or your like uh, your schoolwork? Outside of schoolwork, I only did the Google Data Analytics certification. What I like about um, the certification is at the end, you get to work on like a real life project. And that is like something that you can show during your interview process. Thank you for sharing that. So right. talking about that and like the data science job family itself, I actually heard you on Tech Unlocked podcast, which is by Grace McJones podcast, Tech Unlocked. And um, one of the things that I loved that you said was how you segmented the data science job family into three mm -hmm. buckets. So I would love for you to share that with the audience here, what do you think are like three big focus areas for the, a data scientist? Yeah, and I would also like to credit this, I this thinking, um, the structured thinking to the Towards Data Science Medium blog. That is where I found this. So first, uh, the first like category of data scientists are like analytics focused. So they use BI tools like Tableau, Looker, like Excel, and then I would say the second group of data scientists would be those who are inference focused. So they work with a lot of like A-B experiments um, and they use statistics to make those relationships. And then the third would be algorithmic focus who build machine learning models to like interpret the data. At Etsy, I am a combination of the first the first and second. So I define and track 
metrics for my team, but I also work on experiments that the seller ad experience does for for uh, the sellers on Etsy. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, while you were talking, I actually remember there is actually one company that has defined the data scientist role into these three buckets and it's Airbnb. Um, so if you go on their career page and you look for data scientist position, they will say data scientist dash analytics, data scientist dash causal inference, data scientist oh, wow. dash machine learning. So uh, while you were talking, I actually remember that uh, when I interviewed with them, like that was like one of the things that stood out to me. And I thought that was brilliant. I think that's what we need more of because it gives you clarity mm -hmm. and it like limits the amount that you have to learn for an interview as well as like it right. kind of like solidifies what your focus area is in in the in the domain when you start working there. The question I wanted to ask you so people who are trying to enter the data science field what are some tips you would have for them like let's say if you want to share like your top three tips what would be your top three tips for somebody who is trying to enter the data science field to enter the data science field uh, when you're when you're in the interview process i feel like my big three tips is when do your research like i made sure when i interviewed for a company that i did i knew their like core values um also I um, searched if they had an engineering blog, so I would like bring that up during an interview. Second, I would make sure to ask meaningful questions. Um, usually at, an, at the end of an interview, they will always ask, they will always have like time allotted at the end, like 10 minutes at the end of the interview. And that's like your opportunity to ask more questions to show that you have interest in this company and in this role. And third, I would, say to make a really good first impression when you are in the data science interview room i feel like having a smile good energy and like having small talk at the beginning will make you a very memorable candidate for the role the last one is specifically very very important because i think we all do our prep and then we forget to do the bare minimum, the basic things, and that just like leaves a long, wrong impression let's say tomorrow we go tomorrow is saturday but let's say on Monday, we go to work with you. <laughs> what does a typical day for you as a data scientist looks like? Like what would you start your day with and how would you proceed until the end? Yeah, it really differs by day uh, because some days I'll have a focus day where it's like head downs work. But um, for example, on Tuesday, it's, very, it's a very heavy, meeting heavy day. So I'll have a team meeting with my analytics team and then I will also have like one-on-ones with uh, my product manager, engineering manager, and uh, product designer, so my product squad. And then I try to allot like four hours of just head down focus time to just like be in uninterrupted focus time on my code. There's like a article where in a day you really only have four hours that you can focus on one thing so that's why i pick four hours and um that's my time to like work on my analyses um at etsy that i have like three tiers of work so i have ad hoc analyses for my product squad and then i also have exploratory analysis uh for um my analytics team and then also um exploratory analysis for broader Etsy. So that's what I do on a day to day. That sounds super cool. And then in terms of like people that you work with, like what roles would you say like you work the most with? I work mostly with my senior data scientist. I love him. He just has the best energy. And I feel like when you first start a job, the people around you, especially like your senior data scientists, they're just so forgiving. And like, I feel like I'm so annoying at work, but then I learned that you have to ask all these questions or because you haven't been at the company that long. So, you know, maybe there's a more efficient way to do something that someone, another analyst has done before. So making sure to ask questions is like so important, like on Slack and also to your senior data scientist. So I interact with him the most. Do you also work with like PMs or engineers or as well? Yeah, I, yeah, I also talk closely with my product manager for my initiative that I partner with. So 
he will give me like if there's an experiment that he wants to run then i will do like an experiment power analyses on it i also talk with my manager like once or twice a week talking about any like bigger like exploratory um, analyses that we could do like any questions that we could answer thanks for sharing that uh, talking about being well-rounded i feel like you're like the most well-rounded person <laughs> i know you are not only working in the sexiest job of 21st century <laughs> you're actually doing a lot of cool work like um like being a fashion model like i am so fascinated by you because when i started following you like i didn't know that Thank you were such you. a big deal and i later <laughs> learned like because i know you were like you would post pictures like you were like oh yeah i'm today i'm published in h&m oh yeah today i'm published in sephora yeah today i'm best published in lululemon and i'm like what <laughs> is this girl like she is like so badass like tell us like how did you get into modeling and how do you actually do both of the keep both or like three worlds in parallel like how are you navigating like how many right. how many hours I, do you work i feel like everyone asks me that question of how do i juggle everything uh, but yeah. to answer your first question i started modeling after so i first started in pageants and i modeled for my clothing sponsor and then my mother agent in san francisco she scouted me from that clothing sponsor so i've been modeling for like five years now after modeling for a year in san francisco I moved to New York City because I got signed here and I don't think I would have the opportunities that I have today if I had not made that big move out here when I was 18 and honestly I'm like really thankful for uh, the opportunities I've gotten through modeling because honestly I wouldn't have been as financially independent uh, if I had not started modeling. It's a really good side hustle and it paid the bills while I was looking for a job in tech. As for balancing both right now so before when i was modeling for like macy's target h&m i had so much time to be on call like they could tell me the night before like oh you're gonna be doing e-commerce for cold the next day so be ready for that um, i don't have that flexibility at a nine to five so modeling def definitely is on the back burner but what i do is tell my agents like this is the time i'm free and if there's a campaign or a client that I that's like my dream client then yeah I'll take PTO for that so that's how I balance everything I balance pageantry by doing it on the weekends like my community service and uh training so yeah that's how I balance everything that is so cool you actually are a living example that you don't have to be one dimension you can be multi-dimensional you don't need to look a certain way. You don't need to act a certain way to be in tech. You can be yeah. a fashion model. You can be a pageant queen and you can be a kick-ass data scientist. Like how cool is that? I got into data science by uh, going to the Grace Hopper convention and celebration in 2018. And there was this presentation on multi-potentialite. Um, and it was about Lindsay Scott. She is an iOS developer and model. And I'm like, wow, if she could do it, then why can't I? So I'd love to inspire other women to also pursue all their passions. You know, having like these side hustles shouldn't like hurt your credibility in tech. Um, and I'm always like so empowered by women who are accomplishing so many different things, um, but also pursuing tech. Like you yeah. are like a mom content creator on the side. Like I didn't know, I do not know how you balance everything either same, same way that you do because i have no idea how i do it <laughs> it's just like you you put yourself into the situation you're like okay you don't have an option but you have to do it and you figure out a way how to basically manage everything right. and obviously like having a support system and like people around you who understand what you're doing and support you emotionally as well as like physically <laughs> i don't know if that's the right <laughs> word like they take care of stuff and like helping out around the house and stuff cool tell us like where people can find you you can find me on my personal instagram at marisa delgado that's m-a-r-i-z-z-a delgado this year i really want to focus on putting out more content um one of my goals for this year is to reach 10k so i want to post more reels and thank you so much for joining us today and i am so glad that we got to chat if today's video was helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more about data science tech lifestyle and the tech launch series that i have started where i invite people like marisa where they share their tips and their learnings 
from their own careers, their own job search, their own interview process. So all of us can learn together from other people's experiences. With that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a beautiful day and I'll talk to you later.